yells. This is a job of the Creator Town Hall here on Studio Live today for another week. I hope you're doing well on this episode. We'll be talking about a bunch of stuff. We're talking TikTok right? Uh, we're talking about the Apple October event. Are we going to see some new Macs? I've got an update to my gear guide. We're going to talk about in-ear monitors. And uh, I'm going to ask you this question, which is, have you ever recorded a cover song? Yes, it's finally here. It's finally time. We're halfway through October. <laughs> and it's finally time to reveal my October project, which I only have two weeks to do. And that is to record a cover song. We'll be talking more about that a little bit later in the show. If you're here live and you do have a question that you'd like to ask or a comment or anything at all, uh, just throw it here in the live chat. And if it is a question, just put the word question in front of your question and I'll try and answer your question. Or we can uh, handball it to the cool folks who hang out here in the live chat as well. So if you're here live, I hope you're doing well. Let's crack into this because I wanted to start with this. And that is that I released a video yesterday about zipping and unzipping your files. If you haven't caught it, it's over here. You can check it out now. Well, we'll play a little bit of it here just in the background while we chat. So if you want to learn how to unzip, look at this, it's doing the same hand thing. At least I'm not wearing the same shirt there, right? So I show you how you can use zip and unzip in iOS 13, 14, or 15 on your iPad or your iPhone in order to compress and then back up your GarageBand files uh, oh, there we go. I'll, I'll just jump over there. It's too distracting having two of me. Uh, so you can uh, zip and unzip your files. You can share GarageBand projects. You can archive things. You can uh, do a whole lot of cool stuff. And what I actually have done there in that video, I've given you the ability to download my GarageBand project of my song Work in Progress. So for those that have been around the channel recently, you'll know that every year we do a challenge. We do a song timber song in a month challenge. And this year uh, I did a song called Work in Progress. And I promised at the time that for those that are GarageBand users and those that are interested, you'll be able to actually download and check out the full project file. So that's what you have available now. So if you're looking to do that, jump down into the description. There is a link down there to the video. Jump over to the video about zipping and unzipping. And if you come down here into the show more section here, you go to the description, the very first link there is where you need to go. And all you need to do is click on that link. It's going to take you straight over to my Google Drive and it's going to enable you to download that project file. It will be a zip file. So if you've never zipped and unzipped stuff, then you can actually use that. So all you need to do is download it there, throw it onto your iPad or your iPhone, and then you can actually have a play with it. You can learn the secrets. Wait, there are no secrets. I show you everything on the channel anyway. But if you ever wanted to remix someone else's track, or maybe you wanted to just experiment around and mess up my vocals and make me sound funny, whatever you uh, are looking to do, you can do it with that one. I'm just gonna jump over here to my iPad and uh, I'll give you a quick tour of what the project's gonna look like when you grab it. It's gonna be this one here and we'll jump on into it. So we've got a couple of guitars there. We've got some vocals, we've got some bass, some keys. The one thing you will, <laughs> I've just realized this as I'm saying this all now, these pianos are on the Ravenscroft 275. So if you don't have the Ravenscroft plugin, you'll need to just throw those onto a regular piano track. So I kind of forgotten about that. <laughs> I was trying to keep to regular stuff and then I didn't. Uh, you've even got Jade Star's epic drums included in there as well. So there's a bunch of cool stuff in there that you can play around with and you can come in and you can start sort of soloing different sections here. If you want to listen to Pete's uh, pretty poorly played acoustic guitar, you can do this. If you want to listen to just my soloed vocals and make me feel bad, you can do this. Got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. And probably the coolest thing is that you can even check out the very cool gang vocals that we did here. The, the choir that we have here at the end that sounds like this. We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured. We're all just a work in progress. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing and hearing what folks can get done with that. So go for it. Go ahead, download it, and uh, play around with that project if you've ever wanted to take a look at what it looks like behind the scenes of a GarageBand iOS project. We'll jump into our next topic in just a moment because we're going to talk TikTok, and I know that's everyone's favorite topic. I need to, uh, I need to up my TikTok game. 
and I'm trying to learn from a channel that someone suggested to me. So we'll talk about that in a sec. But first, hello to the folks who are here live. We've got Bass Car Check. We've got Night Train 1988. Hello to Ashley HM. Gregory O'Sullivan over there in Melbourne town. Also Jade Star also of Melbourne town. A lot of Melbourne represents. So I love doing this show because it's a bit more casual, a bit more laid back. And it's a better time for folks that are in places like Australia and uh, Asian countries and as well as the UK and Europe, you can actually catch up and say g'day live here, which is pretty cool. Hello to Deep Gravity. Hello to Dr. Zorders checking in over there. I hope you are doing well as well, my friend. Hello to Tra... What have we got here? Team Puerto Rico Racing. Very cool. Very interesting. Um, see, there's some different folks, and uh, it's cool. It's cool to see some some names that we don't see all the time. So welcome, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoy the time here. Once again, oh, just going to turn down. <laughs> I could hear the background noise of my uh, my iPad coming through. If you've got any other questions, then uh, please do indeed do as I said before. Just uh, throw the word question in front, and we'll be able to try and answer some of those as we go through the show here. I didn't have my, I haven't got my drink prepared. I'm gonna have to pour my drink as we go through here. But um, yeah, let's talk about TikTok, shall we? Uh, uh, hands up, who's on TikTok? Oh, by the way, before we talk TikTok, there is a poll. So if you're here live and if you're joining, we've got a poll open here. I'm just asking about cover songs because we're talking about cover songs a little bit later. But uh, I've been watching this channel quite a bit lately. It is called Museformation. It's uh, Jesse Cannon, and I forget who put me onto him. And I apologise. Was it Thomas Christ? Was it? I, I can't. I can't recall. But whoever it was, it's a very cool channel. And I've been digging a lot of what Jesse's talking about. He's a music marketing professional. Now you'll know that whenever someone asks me about music marketing, I tend to defer it on to people that I tr know and trust. And to now, Damien Keys is who I handball everyone over to because Damien Keys is a very, very cool dude. He knows his stuff and a lot of the information he provides is what I use. When, when I start promoting things, which I don't do enough of, I know, my, my current single I haven't promoted properly, but when I start looking at promoting, I go to Damien Keys. I'm now going over to, uh, to Jesse at Muse Formation and this particular video starting to change my mind about TikTok. So, for those that don't know, for those that aren't like me and that have preteen children that desperately want to watch TikTok, that I ban them from, <laughs> what is TikTok? Well, it's it's a social media video sharing platform, and it is famous, infamous, whatever you want to call it, for having started as just memes of kids dancing, basically, like teenagers dancing around doing weird dances and weird stuff. So, that's kind of where it came from. Where it is now, though, is short-form content about everything. So here's the thing. I think everyone, including myself, dismissed TikTok when it first came out because they said, hey, it's just teenagers dancing around. It's inappropriate. And to be very honest, as a 40-plus-year-old male, I felt super creepy because I don't want to see any of that. So that was then. This is now. What we found now is that TikTok now actually has... So in the last month, and, uh, and Jesse talked about this, TikTok has actually had more hours viewed than YouTube. Now, YouTube is massive. It has billions and trillions of hours viewed every single month. So uh, for TikTok to actually have more views than YouTube, it means that there's stuff happening there. So if you're a musician, if you're a creator, if you're an artist, and you're not checking out TikTok, you're probably missing out on something. Now, if you choose to miss out on that, your prerogative. Same with Facebook. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook, so they're like, no, I'm not going to give Mark Zuckerberg any of my money, so they don't use Facebook. That's cool. That's also your call. And it's the same with TikTok. They're like, no, I don't like it. I, I heard someone told me it was owned by the Chinese government and they're spying on me and whatever. Hate to break it to you, but everyone's spying on you anyway. Whether they're from what country doesn't really make much difference. Um, but yeah, if, you are, if you're using a free service, you are the product. I've said that before. I'll keep saying that. If you're using something for free, you're the product. So you're going to be the product on TikTok too. But hey, if there's going to be... I've been on there and I've been surprised at some of the people that I didn't think would be on TikTok, that I'm now finding and I'm watching their content. And as much as I hate the concept of short form vertical video, uh, I don't like it. I still just don't know why we can't all just turn our phones on the side because that's how we watch video content. And for someone who makes tutorial content and informational content, trying to cram everything into a nine by 16 frame instead of a 16 by nine frame is super frustrating. But it's the way it's going. So, uh, yeah, watch this space. Will, will old man Johns actually embrace things like TikTok in the future? I don't know. 
But uh, I'm not, I think the, the, the only mistake you can make is to not consider all your options. So once you've considered your options and you make your decision and you've decided not to do something, more power to you. But I think the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, including myself, is not to actually consider the options that we have in front of us and TikTok is one of them. So please uh, let me know what you think. If you're here uh, live or on the replay, let me know down in the description what you uh, what you think about that one. Uh, Jade says, uh, I'm on TikTok and never use it. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. I've got a few things. I had, I had a couple of videos that went not viral, but but did get some attention on TikTok. So, uh, in fact, before we move on, not to not to sort of harp on this, but I'll just see if I can throw. Oh, what's happening there? It just started playing something. Um, I, I can't find anything now. But yeah, I did have a few videos here where I just and, and I guess the good thing about TikTok is you can kind of just play around with things. You don't have to be super serious about everything. So I had a couple of videos that got several thousands of views and things, and that's I, I won't even show. I, I was going to go and start showing things, but it, it, the reason it's good for creators is that it's kind of disposable. Does that make sense? You kind of don't care if, if people watch it or not. Whereas if I do a YouTube video, I kind of pour my heart and soul into it. And if people aren't watching it and if it if it fails, I kind of feel a little bit down. So I don't know. Uh, not try 98 never use TikTok. Yeah, and I think that a lot of us are that way. So uh, all I would say is to just explore it or, or just consider it or just check it out or, or, or see if it's going to be for you. It probably won't be. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, there is an enormous demand for one young women jiggling. Uh, well, and that's where it all came from. That's the problem. Uh, hello, Mimo Japan. I hope you are doing well as well. Uh, thank you for dropping on by. Hello to Guzzo of Oz. Uh, looking, looking, into, uh, looking into it in the future, uh, says Doug. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, old, old OMJ, Old Man Johns. I'll, I'll look into it for us and I'll come back and let you know uh, if, if I find it uh, useful for anyone. Uh, hello, Tyler Jefferson. I hope you are doing well. How are you? I am well. Uh, hockey season has started. Um, the Rangers played their first game and they got crushed by the Washington Capitals. So uh, there you go. I, I, I put a post out yesterday saying, I love this time of the season because the Rangers are undefeated uh, and it lasted exactly uh, one day. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you can't win them all. And I've been playing a lot of video games lately as well because the NHL video game comes out this time of year and I've been playing a lot of that. So I'm doing well. I'm having fun. I'm, 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 it's, all, it's all good. Uh, I did see a question there, I believe, from Ashley. I'm just going to scroll back on up. Uh, question is, what is that <laughs> perpetual bird thing drinking all of your coffee? Yeah, that's Duncan. Uh, so I've always wanted a Duncan, a Duncan the Drinking Bird, and I was watching Ted Lasso. Uh, if you've got Apple TV, watch Ted Lasso. Even if you're not into soccer or football, it's a bloody good show. And it's really entertaining, and I don't watch a lot of TV, but I love me some Ted Lasso. So I uh, highly recommend that one. But yeah, in that one, he was at the psychiatrist's office, and she had a Duncan the Drinking Bird there. And I was just mesmerized. And I'm like, yes, it's that Homer bird that keeps hitting the, the key and messes things up for Homer. But I, I still can't work out how it works. And uh, I was in here and, and my wife came in and she's like, okay, so the liquid inside, it goes up and then the, it balances over. And I'm like, yeah, and there's a there's a lever system and a fulcrum and I'm trying to make up science words that I don't really know. But yeah, I need to work out how it actually works because it's, it's as close to perpetual motion as I can think because it's not stopped since I put it there and I haven't filled up the water at all and the water seems to be at the same level. So I'm assuming it's only not perpetual motion because the water will eventually evaporate and then it won't work anymore. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit lost. And it's probably not providing very much power if I if I hooked it up to something. That's an interesting one. Who's who's my favorite actor? Um oh, let me have a, a drink and I'll consider that. Who do I like as an actor? Um Gazzo says Clint Eastwood. Yeah, I'm not, not a huge Clint Eastwood fan. Um who do I like in things? Yeah, I don't know. Tom Hanks. Oh, look, I've always liked Tom Hanks in terms of an actual acting ability. I think he's really good. Um, I like um, John Favreau, who was in a lot of stuff. He was in like Swingers back in the day. Um, so he's good. I, I don't know. It's a good question. I, I don't. I don't know. At the moment, I like um, who's the dude? Jason Sudeikis, because he plays Ted Lasso, and he's a really good actor. Really good in that show. Uh, let's move on to our next topic, and we're going to talk about the Apple October event, because I know we've been talking about the Apple October event. It seems that it's another month and it's another Apple event. Uh, I've linked, by the way, all the show notes for this, all the links that we talk about are down in the description. Yes, the Apple event has been announced for October the 18th, which is only four days away, and uh, it is at a really awkward time, as usual. 
I probably won't be up watching it live, but I will check out the replay and I will be uh, telling you the day after everything that goes down at it. But I won't rehash what we talked about at GarageBand Weekly at the start of the week because we kind of went through all of this, but what we're expecting is some updates to the Mac line. We're expecting some MacBook Pros, hopefully with some sort of improvement on the M1, so something like an M1X, hopefully with some more ports and some more memory and some more capability. Although the Mac Mini M1 that I'm using to stream and do everything I'm doing right here right now is pretty darn good. It's it's really, really cool. And um, I don't know how much better it's going to be for the average user, but for your pro user, yeah, I can understand because at the moment, the the way the Apple ecosystem is, is that all the, the, the full-on Pro versions, the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro 16-inch, they are all still on the old Intel chips. And the M1 is on the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13-inch, and the Mac Mini, and the new iMac. So they're kind of this half-half. They've got their one foot in the Intel camp and one in the M1 camp. What I think we're going to see is that this is going to be the close to the wave goodbye to the Intel chips. And I'm pretty sure that uh, throughout 2022, we won't see any more Intel Macs. So bye-bye Intel. Uh, Duncan uses heat energy. It's not perpetual. Well, yeah, and again, it's not perpetual motion because uh, apart from those YouTube videos that, that people have about like free energy, it's like, no. Um, uh, I, I know enough. I did fail physics, but I know enough about physics to know that, <laughs> that it's not. But uh, yeah, heat energy, that's interesting. So I, I wasn't aware of that and I don't, still don't know quite how it works, but I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to check it out. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I, I'm, I'm on the fence too, because uh, how much better can they get? The whole system on a chip thing with Apple for a creator, when I was buying my new Apple, I was like, eight gigabytes of RAM is not going to be enough and, and integrated graphics is not going to be good. What, what I've had to do and what, what most people have to do at the moment with the whole world of computing is just push out of your brain all of the things we used to think about. And I'm the same. I still think about things in terms of like the, the lessons I learned when you're buying a PC is get as much RAM as you can, as much memory as you can, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, and make sure that you've got a dedicated graphics card with plenty of memory. Now, that's kind of all gone out the window because now the Macs are a system on a chip, which means that the graphics and the CPU and the neural engine and everything is all on the one piece of silicon. And that just means that there's a whole lot more efficiency in terms of how things run. So even though my Mac Mini that's like a little tiny disk sitting underneath my monitor over here, it's running super cool, it runs super efficiently, and it just flies along. I can live stream at 1080p. This, this is the point where Restream just like shuts down and everything goes away. But everything's running really well, and I can't really fault it, apart from some of the teething problems, which has been related to sort of the new Mac OS and some of the hardware configuration with the monitors and things like that, some audio interface issues. My Zoom Live track didn't have a driver, but that was more Zoom's issue than Mac's. But yeah, I'm kind of with you. I don't quite, I don't quite know where we're going. Uh, Tyler Jefferson, hello to you, says, hi Pete, thought I'd let you know that I saw your channel, I'm in year eight when my music teacher linked one of your videos for GarageBand, and then I decided to subscribe. That is awesome, thank you, Tyler, um, I appreciate that, and I do hear that these days, not not all the time, but a lot of teachers have, have been emailing me over the last sort of few months, so I think because a lot of education has gone online, a lot of people are learning remotely, and a lot of people that are running music classes are looking for ways to kind of do things. And if everyone's got, well, not everyone, but a lot of people have iPhones and iPads sitting around, GarageBand is is cheap and accessible, and uh, it, it's good to go. Uh, you're, you're in year 10 now. Well, there you go. So you've been around for a couple of years. That's, that's pretty cool. Good stuff indeed. All right. Uh, let's, let's continue on here. So... <clears throat> Now, normally we do, around the middle of the show, we do sort of like a midpoint motivation, and I don't really have anything motivational this week. We talked at the start of the week about the fact that it was Mental Health Awareness uh, Day, and I'll reiterate what I said there, which is that music should be fun. I'm having fun here. Hopefully, you're having fun watching the show. If you are, hit the long thumbs up button. Uh, what is it? Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and do all the fun things. But uh, yeah, music should be fun, and I decided that I was... Oh, uh, song Temper took it out of me. So I did, a, I did a song in a month throughout the month of September. By the end of the month, I was kind 
tender shafted. And it's taken me these two weeks to recover because that was daily. I was grinding it out. I was not only creating the song and recording the song and writing the song, but creating videos and doing live streams and doing a lot of other things as well. Plus, I was sort of engaging and not helping other people. In, in some cases, I was helping, but sort of helping keep everyone else motivated as well. So by the end of the month, yeah, I was tired. So I had this idea that in October, I would be creating a song in GarageBand on the Mac. And I'm still going to do that. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. So starting from next week, after the weekend of live shows here, I will be creating a cover song. So I've asked the question here live. If you've just joined us, there's a poll there. Let me know. Have you ever recorded a cover song before? Because I'm going to do a cover song. And I'm planning to do a cover song under the guise of my band called Righty Doki. So if you're not familiar with Righty Doki, because no one really is, but when I did my song called Time McFlies, that was Righty Doki, the 1.21. So I did that to show folks how, using DistroKid, you can sign up for the Musician Plus plan, you can add a second account, so a second artist name, and you can release music under a second artist. So I wanted to do all of that so that I could show that. I'm now at the point where I want to do a video series about how to release a cover song with DistroKid because I've released cover with DistroKid, but I didn't actually document the process. So I thought, haha, two birds, one stone. So <laughs> poor birds, I always hate that expression. I killed two birds with one stone. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, enable two birds with one stone. I'm going to set free two birds. And what I'm going to do is create a cover song for my band, Righty Doki, in two weeks, in GarageBand Mac. So that's what it's going to be. What song I'm going to do, what style I'm going to do, that's what we're in, the, is a work in progress, to do, shh, pun intended. So let, let's jump over here. So if you go to the community tab here on Studio Live today, and I recommend you do if you're a subscriber of the channel, I've, uh, I've actually got a poll here. And at the moment, because uh, I wanted to do, so I'm doing an 80s style cover. So I want something that's got sort of some boom, boom, some, some bass, some synths. It's like a big sort of 80s style sound. 80s is kind of cool now. So I wanted something funky, something 80s, something synthy. But I didn't want to do a cover of an 80s song in that style because that would be boring. I wanted to do a cover of a different type of music. So I asked, do I do metal, grunge, rock, hip hop, or singer songwriter? And I even asked folks for ideas of different songs. And there's been some pretty cool ideas so far. So it looks like I'm going to do some sort of rock song. I like the idea of that. I like the idea of doing a rock song, but doing it in an, sort of an 80s synth pop uh, style, synth wave or something like that. So <laughs> thankfully, I've got a bunch of cool comments here from, from you folks that, that we've got some good ideas here. So an 80s rock version of Gangster's Paradise going the other way. That's pretty cool there. Uh, what have we got? Dua Lipa, Break My Heart with Need You Tonight by NXS. A bit of a mashup there. Somebody that I used to know, um, but like Sting. So, like everyone's got some really cool ideas. And um, here you go. So Thomas Christ thinks I should do some 80s thrush metal. So yeah, that, that could be interesting. A Metallica song um, in the style of like an 80s synth pop tune. I don't know. I'm in the process of pondering this stuff at the moment. But if you want to have your say, if you're here live, you can throw it here in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, drop me a comment or even better, go over to the community tab. So the way to get here, by the way, is if you're going to my channel, we'll just search here. I'll, I'll go again. So if you search Pete Johns, it'll bring you up to here. You click on that one. You go into my channel. You can do it on your mobile too. And then you hit the community button there. And that will drop you here into the community tab. I can obviously post something here, but you'll be able to see this stuff here. So you'll be able to see anything that I'm promoting, anything that's going on there. And that's the latest one there. So let me know what you think and what you think I should do. But it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun because I'm going to be using a DAW that I'm not super familiar with, so I'll be learning a lot about GarageBand on Mac as we do this. And the, the last thing I did on GarageBand Mac was Murdering Time, and that was a bit of a challenge because I was doing a new song at the same time as this. But the reason I wanted to do a cover song is that I think that it would be a lot easier when I don't have to worry about writing lyrics. I don't have to worry about writing melodies and tunes and harmonies. I just have to worry about arrangement and recording. So just how I'm going to arrange it, what instruments I'm going to use, and then recording it, and then singing the vocals and doing whatever I do. So that's that's my plan. Let me know what you think. I'm going to have a drink. All right. Uh, let's move on. I'll just see if we've got any final questions. Uh, a few internet buffering problems. 
So yeah, do do let me know about the quality. Anyone else getting this today? Do let me know. Uh, at the moment, it's saying everything is fine, but I have noticed that I'm using Restream. I usually use Streamyard. I'm kind of testing both. I'm on the fence at the moment. Restream has had some things where the, the connections drop down a little bit. So on, on a few a few shows and at a few times, it kind of drops down and the little connection light goes yellow. And then it comes back again. So if you are having those, fit th th them, <laughs> please let me know there. Uh, Glenn Clark, g'day to you from across the ditch over there in New Zealand. Glenn Clark's got a new song. I think I saw. Hopefully Glenn Clark has submitted that new song for um, Song Timber. See, this is where I get distracted. That's why I, I love this show because um, it, I'm just like, oh, something shiny. So I'm just going to go and uh, I'm going to go and check it out because something shiny happened. Uh, no, that was two years ago. I'm just trying to. Find, <laughs> it's weird when you try and find things. Uh, Glenn Clark. There's Glenn Clark. I think I saw. Yeah, it's called She Flies. Look at that. Came out a day ago. This is how much people love Glenn Clark music. Uh, it's had 148 views in a day. The man is a machine. So uh, I, I'm not going to listen to this or watch this right now because Glenn Clark videos and songs need to be experienced. I'm going to give a like. They need to be experienced. And uh, I like to experience them the first time when I play them on Your Music Live. So Glenn has so much of my trust that I don't even... <laughs> I normally vet songs that I play on my weekly Your Music Live show with Glenn stuff. I just play it. I just throw it out there um, because I know that I can trust that Glenn's going to create quality. So there you go. Now that I've given Glenn a pumped Glenn's tires for you, uh, go and check out Glenn Clark because he makes some exceptional music. And yes, he's just uh, submitted it. So you can be pretty sure that in uh, this week or in a very very soon future episode, we will be uh, we'll be playing uh, Glenn Clark's song. Uh, looks great here. Well, there you go. That's cool. Uh, and it looks fine here at this end as well. And you never know. Sometimes it's at my end. I, I never blame things because you know what? I'm talking into the magic box that sends my face and my voice around the world. It's, it's a bit nuts. Like, uh, whenever think something goes wrong, people are like, oh man, I can't believe Facebook's down. I can't believe YouTube crashed again. I can't believe my computer, fa dudes, dudettes. We live in the future. Like the very fact that I can do this at all kind of blows my my tiny little pea brain. Uh, and I think because I came up in the world of dial up, can anyone else uh, relate with you know the twenty eight point eight and the fourteen point four and the ninety six hundred board and the twenty four hundred board modems? Got a BBS? Yeah. Let's just say that when when my NBN connection goes down for an hour and uh, the rest of the well not the family but the children that don't understand how internet works freak out. I'm just like. You're gonna to have to chill because uh, we. Th this is good. <laughs> this is a good part of life that we have 98% uptime of our lightning fast internet, where the entire world is at your fingertips. But in their defence, they've never known any different, and I understand that. That a lot of folks have never known the struggles that we went back to. We used to sit in our caves for eight hours, grappling with our hardware just to get onto the bulletin board so that we could download that latest zip file of a shareware game, and then go outside and yell at clouds because we were already old men. Hello, Sion. I hope you are doing well. Uh, Guzzo of Oz. Uh, question. Can you talk us through the legals of releasing covers through DistroKid and on YouTube? Yes, I can. Uh, and I'll be covering this in detail right throughout the, the, the rest of the month. So the two weeks that I'm doing this, the reason I want to do this is I want to tackle a few things. I want to tackle copyright and content ID and YouTube and then I also want to just do some experimentation, like throwing this out there onto Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and just seeing what happens with a cover song because it, this stuff is like a moving target. But the basics of that are that through DistroKid, if you want to release a cover, you need to, it costs extra. So it costs you $1 per song per month. So $12 a year, which seems like a bit, but here's what happens. DistroKid actually manage all of the royalties. So they actually manage the, the splitting of everything. They manage c capturing the royalties, making sure that the original artist gets paid. So it does take a little bit longer to release a cover song because they do all that behind the scenes. But in my experience, it all works pretty seamlessly. So a, an example one was that, uh, that Jade Star released a song. She released a cover of the Ben Folds song, Smoke. So she released this using DistroKid. So uh, Jade is, is kind enough to, to, to pay the $12 per year on top of her DistroKid plan. And this means that this song, Smoke, is released to all the platforms. Now, there it is on her actual channel. Uh, but I think if we go to Jade Star, I think it's under Jade Star Dread Circus label or, or um, channel, topic channel. 
I'm not going to be able to find it. But you, you know the ones. Oh, here it is. Jade. Yeah, see, there it is. There's the last release onto Jade Star Dread Circus. So it will actually release it here. So you pay the $12. They handle everything. You still get paid a little bit. So the way it works, and I'm, I'm going to get my terminology wrong. There's like the mechanical royalty. There's the performance royalty. So the performance is you or it's going to be me, and in this case is me and Jade, but you still have to pay that mechanical royalty license back to the original copyright owner, who is the songwriter and the original owner of the original song. So Distro can manage all of that for you. When it comes to YouTube and cover songs, it's a little bit different. So YouTube manage it through their content ID system. So if I, uh, and look, I've done this before. We can probably give you a practical example because that'll make it a bit easier. So I, this week, in fact, there very, very good, very relevant. This week, I did a, uh, I released a cover that I did on my happy hour show of Rock in the Suburbs by Ben Folds. So there it is. There's Ben doing it. There's me doing it. <laughs> and uh, so if we, we click on this one, it'll start playing it here. Now, what I can do, if I go into my analytics for this one, it's going to show me that there is a copyright claim on this video. So if we go to the analytics button here, it's going to drop me over here into my YouTube analytics. It's going to tell you how many people watched it and how many views. That's fine. That I, got, I gained two subscribers from releasing that video. And you can see that compared to my usual videos, it has significantly underperformed, <laughs> which is fine. It's just a cover song I threw out there. Uh, but what we can do is if we go to, I'm going to remember where it puts this. Uh, there is a uh, under monetization. So under monetization here, you'll notice here that it says sharing. So I'm sharing the monetization here with Ben Folds because it says this video was not, was found to contain copyrighted material. It is being monetized, but revenue is being shared with the other copyright owners. So YouTube through their content ID system does the same thing. It identified that the melody I was singing was Rock in the Suburbs by Ben Folds. It then said, right, this is in our content ID library. We're going to put a content claim on this, but unlike a, a content ID where you're using someone else's original performance, it's saying you did a cover of someone else's performance. So we're going to take it, any advertising revenue on this, we're going to split it up. We're going to chuck most of it over to Ben Folds and then we're going to give a couple of micro cents to, to Pete Johns for that one. So <laughs> that's how it all works there. And if I click the details button here, it'll actually take me in here and show me exactly what's going on here. So it says, yep, it's not affected. It's visible everywhere. We're sharing the monetization. Here's all the copyright owners around the world. Uh, UMPI, Mint BMG, Latin Author, Sony ATV, Warner Chapel, Latin Author, Warner Chapel, BMG. So yeah, it's owned by a lot of people. I'm, I'm a bad I'm a bad man and I should feel bad. And it tells you where the content was. You can play it back. I obviously won't because then this video would get a copyright claim. So that's how it all works in terms of DistroKid and how it works in terms of YouTube as well. So if you want to release a cover song, hopefully that gives you a bit of a leg up. And we'll definitely be uh, be covering more of that detail uh, throughout the next month. All right. Uh, question from Sion. We'll have a drink while we read this one. Uh, did you get your Zoom interface to work with your M1? I haven't had much luck with mine. Yes, I did, Sion. So I had to download and install the updated M1 driver. So the updated driver for Mac what is it, High Sierra? What, what's the name of the current one we're on, Catalina? I can't remember now. Whatever iOS, Mac OS 11 that we're running. Um, so yeah, yeah, I just went to the Zoom website, zoom.us, I think it is, or zoom.jp, and um, downloaded, the, there's, there was a new Mac driver. But it didn't come out for about the first three months, so I was back using my old Samsung Mixpad, but since then I've been able to use the, uh, the Samsung M1. We've got some folks. Deep Gravity remembers it. Yes, Ashley's from the 56k dial-up. Mimo Japan is representing. See, I threw down 2400 board, and Mimo Japan has taken it to the next level and said 300 board. So you're probably rocking that on like an old Apple II or something too, Mimo Japan. I bet you. I bet you it was old school. See, I didn't start till the PC days. Uh, my old Commodore 64 never went online or onto any BBSs, so I started at 2400. Yeah, not not being able to use the phone when you're online, I know. And the connections and the dial up and the oh, I know. Clearly, we've got some uh, some some like aged people around here. <laughs> um, I assume some artists say no cover for you. So yeah, the, there's a couple of things to consider there. Through DistroKid, it's usually pretty good because uh, if artists are going to get paid, see, artists understand the whole cover song thing. Sorry, I'll, I'll talk about these in a minute. They've, they've been doing pretty well so far, the, um, the in-ear monitors, but they're just starting to fall a little bit. Um, 
most artists are pretty cool because they know that the system where you release a cover song, they're going to get paid. Um, and it's been, if you're selling it back in the past, if you're selling a single or an album with a cover song, they'd be happy with that. Streaming, yeah, they're still okay with that. It's YouTube that's the problem. So you'll notice that there's a few bands and a few artists that I never cover. I will never play an Eagles song because they are apparently, I've never played them, but I've, I've taken the advice of other people who have shown me that they've played uh, you know, a Hotel California cover and suddenly their video is blocked in like 173 countries because, um, yeah, the, the, the Eagles don't want people playing their songs, which I think is ridiculous because no one's going to listen to my cover of Hotel California instead of the original. And if they listen to mine, they might just go, ah. Oh. In fact, more people have listened to songs that I've played. I played um, a bunch of Ben songs. I played Ben Harper and Ben Queller and Ben Lee and Ben Folds. And a bunch of people said, oh, I went and checked out those artists. I wasn't aware of them, but when you played their cover songs, now I am. So that's why I think covers are cool. In terms of the District Kid thing, yeah, they'll usually go through. You'll usually be okay with uh, with District Kid and uh, getting the licensing. But yeah, it can take a while because technically they have to get in touch with not necessarily the artist. Like if I do a Bruce Springsteen number, they're not calling up Bruce and saying, hey, boss, uh, Pete Johns in Australia wants to do a cover. But it does need to go through and there'd be like tick box processes of people that would just uh, say yes, no, and otherwise. I'm just going to uh, do this real quick just to make sure that we're actually comfortable here. I should do the uh, I should do the the smushing in there to, to make them a bit better. Uh, no worries. I'm, I'm, I, hope it, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, Glenn says, I, I need to look at the analytics on my channel. I tend to just post and forget, uh, but it's quite interesting seeing all the stats. Yeah, if you're a numbers person, the stats side of things can be kind of interesting. So it's, it, it's worth going and having a look. I thought I had something related to that. Though. Yeah, I was going to mention this later, but um, if you missed it, I did a YouTube Q&A. So this video here from a couple of days ago, uh, back on the 13th, I streamed this one live and it was a YouTube Q&A. So if you missed out on that one, um, well, oops, hang on. I went, I went out of it. We'll just go back here. Sorry, sorry for that. So yeah, there it is. There's me chatting away, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of a lot of the same folks were here. But it was um, in the morning, so a lot of the US and Canadian folks that usually drop on by were, were there as well. Uh, but if you did miss the video because you are here in Australia or in Asia or in uh, Europe or UK, do check it out. We spent two hours, and what I did is I actually went through everything that I do for a video. We went back to an old video and we enhanced it. We looked at the, the description and the thumbnail and the tags and the titles. We looked at the analytics. We talked about managing your YouTube videos and what you need to do. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not one to hide any of my secrets. <laughs> I just put it all out there on Front Street and say, hey, if you want to do this stuff, that's cool. If you want to listen to me, that's cool. If you don't, that's fine too. Yeah, it, but I, I don't sort of hide anything from what I do with my channel because I, I want I want you folks to be successful as well. And I'm a true believer in the, uh, the, the high tide raises all ships as opposed to the competitiveness that I, I don't see that much of it, to be honest, because a lot of us that are in these sort of in this world, when I chat to Mike over at Creative Source, when I chat to Patrick Baird, when I chat to Jade Starr and Dan Baker and all these guys, uh, yeah, it, it, it's we're all doing the same stuff. We want people to, to learn and to grow and to develop. Um, that all being said, Big Sir, there you go. <laughs> yes, I, I was like, what, what was the name of it? Big Sir. Um, all that being said, if you want more of this, I don't go into all the detail here because there's a lot. So if you want more, if you want the more de in-depth stuff over on Patreon, I share a lot of that. So patreon.com slash Pete Johns. Uh, is it still 75 years to public domain after initial published or death of the composer? I believe, I believe Disney got that pushed through. Was it Disney? No. Well, one, some, one of the big groups that didn't want things to go out of, um, copyright. I can't remember who to blame now, but I think it is still 75. I think it's the, the death of the original composer plus 75. And I think it was, I think that's more for video because Disney... Didn't want people um, utilizing theirs, so they didn't want like Snow White and stuff to be uh, out of copyright. Because a lot of their stuff, if you think about it, in 75 years, that's like the 40s now. That's like the 40s and 50s. So a lot of stuff that is going to start coming up. Like one day the Beatles will be public domain, and that's pretty weird, right? It's going to be bizarre. Uh, there you go, Apple IIe. E. Yeah, Ashley was rocking the Apple IIe. I remember when MIDI was born. Yeah, so MIDI... MIDI, the old musical instrument digital interface, so MIDI keyboards and then MIDI computer interfaces, 
um, I don't think it was the very first one, but the Atari ST was very big. That actually had built-in MIDI ports. So we should we should do a retro computer re like hour where I just we, we just sit and talk nothing but retro computer stuff. That would be super fun. Um, but yeah, I used my my first Sound Blaster card had a MIDI port, so I um I had the MIDI cable that I connected my then really clunky old Casio uh, that had MIDI out into my three eight six PC with a Sound Blaster Pro card. That was my first MIDI thing. Uh, do, 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 do. yeah, they <laughs> only just. Re- I know I have actual ears and a, a top of my head, so yeah, I'm not wearing the. Uh, I'm not wearing the Sennheisers. I've got the Shaw, but these ones. In fact, that's a fantastic segue. Uh, we're about to talk about this anyway, but a fantastic segue there from our friend uh, Night Train, which is that yeah, how are these going? So I mentioned these on Garage Band Weekly, was it or no? It was the Gear Q and A, I think. Not the gear, the uh, YouTube Q&A. So I'm using these. These are the Shure uh, SE215. They're in-ear monitors. That's the box there. And this is what they are here. Now, they're taking a little bit of a while to get used to because these are a very different design. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take this one off and show you. I've got them behind me as well, which makes it extra clunky. So you can see here that this part is similar to a regular earbud, but these things are like the soft foam. Remember the um the aeroplane earphones you used to get where you'd shove the yellow foam bits in your ears? Similar to that, or like just standard earplugs you'd use at a concert. So you can see when I squish it in, it kind of stays squished in, so like that. And then that's supposed to go cramming in your ear hole so that it gets a nice fit in there, and they're noise isolating. So they expand out in your ear holes, so that you're not going to hear any other noise. And then for me, I'm going to chuck them behind. The main reason I'm having problems is that I've got two things that I tried. I tried using my uh, extension, but this is a, a, a quarter inch extension, and that's actually quite heavy. So what I was finding is when I was plugging into this extension and trying to put that down here behind me, it kept pulling down on the right side. So in the last show, I was pulling down this side the entire time. In this show, I'm just plugging straight into my mixer. So my mixer is sitting just here. In fact, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a photo and then I'll put it up here on the screen because uh, this is the joy of Apple, the Apple universe. You'll be able to see how we're set up here. So this is this is my mixer and this is directly in front of me. I'll put my hand there on the mixer so that you can see this. Let's um see. Let's see how quickly uh, I can... Uh, oh, I've taken it sideways now. Let's see how quickly I can send this over to my Mac uh, using... Yeah. Come on, Apple. This is what you say. Everything's easy, right? I should be able to send this and airdrop it straight to my Mac Mini. It should go bing, 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 bing in a moment, which it's about to do. Oh, it doesn't like doing things live. Spinning, it's sending, it's sent. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll bring up this photo. So I should be able to just click on this photo and open. And it should bring it up. There it is. That wasn't too hard at all, actually. So over here, this is what I'm doing now. So <laughs> I've just got it plugged directly into one of my headphone outputs there on the Zoom Live Track L8. And it just it's not quite long enough. So what I'm going to need to do is buy myself a three a, a thin and light three and a half mil extension cable that I can plug this one in because the, the, the cable itself is just not quite long enough as you can see there. It's just kind of going over the top there. So once I get an extra even half a meter but probably a meter cable that means that this will just be able to sit here. It'll be able to go down the left side of me behind my butt and then come up the back here. And if these things are not pulling like down like they are when I move my head, they're going to be super comfortable. I could even probably clip them to the back. In fact, I could do that right now, couldn't I? If I got a clip, I could just clip them to the back there. Okay. I'm I'm learning as I go. This is what I t- this is what I talk about with creating stuff, folks. When you've got new gear or when you're creating things, just learn as you go. Like no one knows everything straight up and, and I I didn't know any of this stuff. So uh, but but the, what why am I going with these? Well, number one, it means that I don't have to have the big heavy and hot um, cans on for hours at a time. Uh, it means that if I'm playing, these are really great for tracking, in fact, because and when you're playing live and when you're playing along with music, because there's virtually zero noise escaping from these suckers. So that makes them really cool for for tracking and playing guitar and singing and that sort of thing and playing live so if and when i want to play along to backing tracks i'll be able to throw these in clip them now that i'm just worked out that i can probably clip them clip it to the back of my shirt and then I, I can play live and i'll be able to be monitoring my mix as i'm playing and hearing myself and mixing myself in with a backing track so that is why i went with the in-ear monitors so keep it on the channel i'll let you know more about how these turn out they're about a 
I think they're about $130. That, that's what they were here in Australia. Let's just do a quick price check. I did, I did link them. They're not available here on Amazon at the moment, so I couldn't work out the price there. But if we jump over to our friends at Sweetwater, they've generally got everything in stock and can usually give you some prices on it. So let's go Shaw 21.5 and see what these are at. Okay, so I got a pretty good deal. So, uh, so the a the Aonic. So I don't know if they're a newer version of it. Probably it's probably why I got these so cheap here in Australia. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's exactly these. So the the S two fifteen, and yeah, you do get uh you do get the original types there. So I'm using these foam insert ones. You do also get your original rubber ones if you prefer your rubber there. But um. Yeah, they're the, the black ones. I've got the clear ones. And it is a bit different, actually, because that's a new case. So this is the case. So that must be a new model. These are the older ones, but same exact sort of design and things. So there you go. If you want to check those out, uh, jump over. And if, if they if they make the cut, it'll be, uh, it'll be in the gear guide. But uh, I don't put anything in the gear guide until I'm absolutely confident that it's going to, uh, that it's going to be something that I'll keep using. Good question here from the doctor. Is it safe to update to iOS 15 now or hold off a bit longer? So it is safe for most people. And I'll say the same thing I say a lot, which is there's nothing new in iOS 15 that I would race out and do it for. And if unless any of those features really, really appeal to you, there's no security updates that are in iOS 15 that aren't in 14.8. That'll change soon, so it'll be at the point where there'll be some sort of security reason and, and Apple will just say, you just need to update now. Uh, but you still probably got at least another couple of weeks until it's going to become kind of essential. The The main problems folks are still having are with Focusrite audio interfaces uh, and some software and some apps. And I think Jade was saying that Aurea Pro is having some hiccups with iOS 15 or iPad OS 15. So uh, keep that in mind if you're an Aurea user. Odd GarageBand, I've now got half my devices on 15 and half on 14.8. They're all talking to each other perfectly. They're all functioning perfectly. I haven't had any compatibility issues between the two. So um, I think you'd be totally fine if you're a regular user. You're not using a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, it, it Again, it's just it's kind of just not worth it. If there was a if there was a killer feature in iOS 15 or iPad OS 15, I'd probably say go for it without any hesitation. But yeah, it, 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 uh, you can probably still leave it another couple of weeks, Doc. Uh, the da, 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 Mimo Japan says uh, there's some exploited stuff going on. Uh, so is there? And that's the question I had because I thought 14.8 was uh, patching the exploits, but maybe that maybe there's been some since because I know there's is there 15.01 already. I know we don't have 15.1 yet. I should probably know that. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, I, don't, I think you'd be fine if you if you did go ahead with it. Uh, so far, the iPhone seems to work with no things lost. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Atari ST, the MPU 401. Oh yeah, my first Atari was made out of wood. Weird fact, I've got a, uh, I've got an Atari, the Darth Vader model of the 2400 sitting in the cupboard upstairs with a bunch of games, got Space Invader and Pitfall and all the good stuff. So yeah, maybe, maybe we will do that. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a live stream one day where I get the Atari. I wonder if there's any way to, cause the Atari uses the old, um, what are they? The RF cables. So like you have to plug it into an analog TV. Do I even have an analog TV that I could tune it into anymore? I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'd have to find an analog TV uh, that I can plug it in RF and then find a way. There, there's got to be there's got to be boxes, right? There'd be an RF to RF to VGA box or something that I'd be able to get for 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 like my old consoles. I don't know. Uh, Amiga five hundred with the uh, with MIDI interface connected to the joystick port. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Uh, Deep Gravity says uh, not a question, but I took your advice and signed up to Canva Pro. Good. Job, yeah, Canva is the bomb. Uh, if you are a designer, or more importantly, if you're not a designer but you want to do cool designs, Canva Pro, it's just next level. Like it just lets you do stuff. Like, in fact, I was playing. <laughs> I, I, I'll show you this real quick because I thought this was kind of cool. Um, how are we going on time? Oh, we've got about twelve minutes. Uh, so I was um, playing around the other day, and um, someone was mentioning to me that Canva Pro has really good video stuff in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, it does too. And I, I briefly showed my daughter and uh, she's like, oh, that's that's pretty cool, Dad. I'll, I'll make you a video. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she made a video for my, um, for my work in progress song and it's pretty darn cool. It's all made in here using, um, using Canva. Is this her version or is this, is this one that I did? 
I, I tried to do one and then she did one and it was uh, much, much better. I think this one might be hers. Yeah. So uh, I'll just take a listen to this and, and a bit of a look at this. So <laughs> this is what she put together here, right here in Canva, because Canva has all of this stock footage that you can use. So you can actually use all these videos as well to go in there. So uh, take a look at this. Because we're all yeah. just so, uh, a work in oh, progress. Uh, Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're together. all yeah. just right a work camera. in progress. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it figured out. Nobody's knowing all that. And those uh, clicks and pops are just the, uh, the streaming here. Not everything will go to plan. Kaboom! <laughs> I like the guy making drinks. <laughs> We're all just a work in progress now. Have a have a beverage. Have a cocktail. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Canva is cool. Uh, check the link down below if you uh, want to check it out for um for free. And then if you like Cam, decide you want to upgrade to the Pro, you can do that. Yeah, extensions for headphones are, are important. Um, yeah, because uh, you just want to be able to get a bit away from your gear. And uh, I've, I've got a couple of extensions, but again, they've all got those heavy ends. So I need one that's just going to be the little three and a half mil jack extension. So we'll, I'll grab one of those. Uh, hello, Eagle Tarek. I hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, what have I missed? Uh, there you go. Patch it today. Apple released an urgent iOS to patch new zero day bug. The bug is under attack with the PO code shows. So there you go. Mimo Japan has just uh, rectified the situation. Apparently, iOS 15. Are we sure it's a zero day exploit? Or uh, have Apple just really wanted to push everyone to iOS 15? Mm, just saying. <laughs> Hello, Emil. I hope you're doing well. Uh, bought a new iPhone? No. So I'm on the 12 Pro. The 13 Pro doesn't have anything that I need outside of this. I mean, some of the cool camera features, yeah, yeah sure, but this thing's still got a great camera. So, no, I won't be upgrading my phone till probably the 14 or the 15, uh, Emil. But uh, if, you're on, if you're on an earlier phone, if you're on a 10 or an 11, then uh, you'll be good to go. <clears throat> All right, 15.02 apparently we're at now. There you go. <laughs> oh, 15.0.2. <clears throat> there you go. I still have the original Game Boy. Does that count? It does. In fact... Always in arm's reach for me, and this isn't my OG one because my OG one melted in a car fire. More about that another day, but I don't want to re relive that right now. Um, but yeah, I've got my um, my Game Boy Pocket right here. Ba bing! Should we play some Tetris? Will I get a copyright claim if I play the Tetris theme here? <laughs> yep. Come on. Who doesn't want who doesn't want to rock some Tetris in a big bad way? Yeah. Do 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 Look at that old school goodness with the monochrome non backlit screen. Oh yeah. Tetris was the bomb. I played so many hours of Tetris, it was ridiculous. And uh in here I've also got <clears throat> I've got me some uh Super Mario Land 2, which is a pretty rare game these days, but this one's uh an OG that I bought. I bought this game uh, in the UK of all places when I was on a trip way back when in the, uh, what, the late 90s, early noughts, something like that. Anyway, I'm telling you, nostalgia, retro. We need to do a whole retro tech, retro gaming, retro computing show, a whole separate one because it's a lot of fun. It's good stuff. All right. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There is a security fix. So, thank you, folks. You know, Pete, Pete's completely not up to date. So, what will I be doing after this? Checking all my devices and making sure that I've updated <laughs> to 15.0.2. Uh, to uh, Righty dokey. Uh, Success Plus. Yeah, the Success Plus is pretty cool. Uh, the, eight, the eights are cool. The Successes are still a great phone. Uh, pretty good. It's, it's, it's no, uh, it's no um, what is it, Rubik's Cube, Glenn? But it's pretty darn cool. Uh, it's Russ. Hello, Russ. How are you, mate? You got here just in time for us to finish up. <laughs> What's left on the list here? Uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, so 
We'll do these all really quickly because we don't have a whole heap of time left. But the gear guide, uh, just a reminder there that uh, you can go to the gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. And uh, that has links up the top here if you're in the US or the UK or Canada or Australia. You've got Sweetwater links for the US. You've got eBay links there. And you've even got Thoman for our UK and European friends if you use Thoman. I haven't actually checked my Thoman affiliate page for about a year. Maybe someone's been in there buying tens of thousands of dollars worth of, or, or pounds or euros worth of gear. I should probably go do that. <laughs> it's the one place that I, I used to not get any sales, so I haven't checked it for a while. So we'll do that. Uh, but here's my mobile setup and my desktop setup. So if you're wondering about any of the gear that I use here for this live stream, it's all here in the desktop setup. My Mac it, Mini M1, my Zoom Live Track Mixer, usually my Sennheiser headphones, and all the other gear I've got plugged in there. And then my mobile setup. So my uh, iPad Pro, my iRig Pro Duo, interface all the microphones and all the other goodness that i use is there studiolivetoday.com slash gear link in the description yes tetris for the absolute win uh, i'm i'm so going to sit down and play some tetris straight after this stream i guarantee you all right we've talked about the uh, the in-ear monitors one thing that uh, my man dave dave was asking me some questions about some usb interface connections and then he said to me he says did you see that uh, UA, Universal Audio, have these new Vault audio interfaces, these retro-looking Vault interfaces coming out? And I said, no, Dave, I didn't. And see, we've got a real theme here today, haven't we? It's Retro Tech Tuesday, except it's Thursday. And you know, it's, it's Thursday for everyone. <laughs> Finally, it's a day where every, it's the same day for everyone. Uh, but look at these things. Like, yeah, the, the high-end ones are like 370 bucks for like a, what I think is probably a four-channel one. But these have got like built-in like compressors. Like, this has got a built-in FET compressor. Uh, it's got all the software bundles there. It's got MIDI in, out. It's a 24-bit 192. It's USB-C. This looks really cool. And they've got like very nice looking preamps on these things. So you can get like a basic version here that's more like an audio interface or these ones look the the, the goods. So maybe I need to uh, need to talk nicely to U, UA and say, can you send me one of these? Because they look kind of epic. Look at that. How cool does it look? Wood grain right there. So in terms of features, they don't have a lot that you don't have on other things, but the fact that you got like the FET compressor right on there, like an 1176 style compressor right on your inputs, that's pretty cool. And you've got presets there for vocals, guitars, fast compression, and turn it off. So I don't know. That's the one thing that I'm like, sometimes I'm recording, I'm like, you know what, I really want, I really want some more compression on that. And sure, you can add it in afterwards, but yeah, compressing on the way in was a universal audio uh, compression technology. Looks tasty, doesn't it? Look at those lights. Come on. Little little red and green lights on the front there. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah. So, thank you, Dave, for, for putting me onto those. They look uh, they look awesome. Uh, Sion, uh, Sion. Emil says, I bought an iPad Pro recently. The iPads are really amazing, uh, but not necessary. Uh, depends. Depends on your workflow. I, I, I don't... I don't get involved in the um, Apple versus PC, iPad versus Mac, uh, Android versus iOS debates anymore because if you get if you've got something, so yeah, if, for you it may be that the iPad's not necessary because you're using a Mac and it, it does everything you need to. For me, I'm the other way around. <laughs> my iPad does everything I need, so I'm like, do I get a Mac? And I did. I like my Mac for some things, but the workflow is still better on the iPad for me for a lot of things. So there's that. Um, what else do we have on the list here? I think we're nearly at the end here. So yeah, we've talked about that, the, the uh, YouTube Q&A. Last but not least, what's happening this weekend? So uh, you can jump on over to if the, the description of this very video. Uh, you can jump down and check out. Uh, I'll just jump over here now and I'll show you. So there are links to all of the shows from the weekend. I know a lot of folks at the moment have been saying, I, I missed the show. Um, I didn't know when you were doing this. I didn't know what time all this was. So if you are missing all of those things, uh, you can jump over here to the description of this very show and it will have links to all of the shows. In fact, it doesn't run now because I haven't put the show notes in there. <laughs> I'm going to quickly on the fly edit this and put my show notes in there and then you'll have them. Uh, so you can check out all of the stuff that's going on here. We'll just do this and we'll go show notes. <laughs> As I was saying all these links, people are going to go afterwards and they're going to be, uh, Pete, you, you didn't have any of those links there. So 
you can check that out if you want to catch the Your Music Live or the Happy Hour that are happening this weekend. They are now officially linked in the description. Let's, before we finish off here, check out the poll. So how many of you have actually released a cover song or uh, completed a recording of a cover song? So we're going to end that poll there. Uh, we did end up with, uh, with a handful of votes there. 40 votes and 67% of you have and 32% haven't. So that's two out of three, almost exactly. Two out of three creators here on the live show have completed, uh, have recorded a cover song. And cover songs are cool. If you've never recorded a cover song, join me throughout the rest of the month of October. I'll be recording one in GarageBand on Mac, and you can do it as well. Join along. Why not? Because it'll be fun. That is going to do it for this particular show. The other thing I'll mention, since we've got Mimo Japan here, he is one of the moderators over at our friend Mike's channel. And Mike does a show called Featured Artists Live. It's a slightly later time tonight, so it's not for another hour. And here's the big news. Drum roll, please. Guess what? Mike's in stereo tonight. Can you believe it? And he's got Ricky T. Brown and The Lonely Rocker with him over there. So you know it's going to be a good show. I'm already excited there about the live. So uh, jump on over and check out Mike with Ricky and The Lonely Rocker over there. And uh, I'll put this in the chat here for you right now so that you can check out that show. If my mouse is going to work, boom, there you go. So I'm interested to know. Yes, I know he's finally got stereo. I'm interested to know how he's actually done it and why it took him 12 shows to work out how to, to for, for a music channel to work out how to play stereo. Shh, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> All right, folks, that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for being here. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Keep rocking, keep creating, keep doing your thing. And I'll see you next time on, you, I was going to say, Your Music Live on the Creator Town Hall. Bye.